Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of PNN Live this Monday, November 18th at 3 p.m. We will soon be tuned in to the C-SPAN 3 Senate Homeland Security Committee meeting happening today in New York, right now, live, as we hear commentary from Davi Barker of ShinyBadges.com and Thomas Hunt of Mad Bitcoins and the Bitcoin Group. Uh, thanks for being with us, guys. Absolutely. Thank you, Derek. And without further ado, I'm going to get started on the video and uh, commentate away. It can be used to purchase real and digital goods uh, across the world. Some proponents, uh, proponents believe that digital currencies can prove valuable to those in developing countries without access to stable financial systems. Others believe it could prove to be the next generation payment system for retailers, both online and in the real world. At the same time, however, virtual currencies can be an effective tool for those looking to, to launder money. What are you guys expecting from this? They, he already mentioned drugs, laundering money, and it's, we're only uh, one minute into this. Children around the world. I was expecting yeah. uncertainty and doubt. I've seen increased attention from I was expecting them to, to uh, from law enforcement from investors and entrepreneurs stress that in point. recent months. Um, I anticipate that the standard will be that everything is prohibited until it is given permission, and so they'll probably propose applications or permits or licenses before you're allowed to use a digital currency. As a whole. Oh, come on. There'll be some Democrats there. They'll say it's a positive, modern technology. It's very exciting. There's a big future to it. There'll be some upside. And navigate. Now, now during this um, commentary, we were just joined by Benjamin Bartholomew of GoodMenDoSomething.org. Welcome, Benjamin. On multiple platforms. And uh, we're uh, talking about what we expect right. from this here hearing today. In 2001, uh, we, uh, we received for every email that came in uh, to us from constituents in Delaware across the country. For every uh, every email we see, probably 10 to 15. Oh, for some reason I was muted. Uh, have they said anything interesting? I haven't had a chance to watch any of the hearing this morning. I knew it was coming up. Yeah, well, within 60 13, seconds, you know, um, get, the man speaking, introducing the concept of Bitcoin, um, already brought up uh, the concept of money laundering. For, for, um, for the just just a, another way I'll of saying, you know, that, transferring like money Americans voluntarily. I'm no practical expert in virtual currencies. I think all of you are gathered in this room who are, and uh, we'll see. But I also expect them to dramatically misdefine what Bitcoin is. Today. What I do know is that a number of smart people, both inside and outside of government, So who is this, this guy talking? Have, we have, have they brought up you can buy drugs attention. with Bitcoin? Maybe. No, but they will. <laughs> so who's <laughs> speaking right now is a senator, here. Tom yeah, Carper. Uh, a Democrat from party. Delaware, a lot of who apparently is on the Homeland Security and Our Government Affairs Committee. He is the chairman of those understand that, uh, organization. Address these implications. This was made all the more clear. So it's my understanding that he's the one who called this meeting. Uh, so I guess he's doing road, the on which many uh, introductions and here. Were bought and sold via Bitcoin. The most popular products uh, for sale were illegal drugs. Foreign documents such as IDs and passports. There you uh, go. Services were also <laughs> including hacking services. We're told that the Silk Road dollars. was the Bitcoin, uh, you know, market. Right. The site lived on what is often called the dark web, also known as the deep web. The dark web consists of web pages and data that are only available via special software that keeps users anonymous. Many sites and data on the dark web have been deliberately built to be untraceable in order to protect the anonymity of the user. And Silk, Silk Road was one of those sites. My understanding is that uh, individuals could navigate to Silk Road anonymously and use Bitcoin, which can be sent to someone nearly anonymously to make purchases. He says that like it's a bad thing. The anonymity of the marketplace and near anonymity of the currency made it nearly impossible for law enforcement to track and therefore made it an attractive place for criminal activity. In fact, in the course of our investigation, the Department of Homeland Security informed us that the uh, suspects who allegedly sent rice to President Obama in April of this year was a vendor on Silk Road. Law enforcement, including the FBI, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and the Secret Service should be applauded for their work in taking down a major international 
criminal enterprise. So I should mention that as this meeting is getting started, the price of Bitcoin is approximately six hundred and sixty-five dollars through Bitcoin transactions. Um, which which side are you taking your your? Oh, I'm taking from that from Mount Gox, apparently. Okay, yeah, that's, that's Anne Fallen. Moody. If uh, anyone has a better uh, price that we can go off of, we, we should quote them at the beginning. Well-known virtual currency Bitcoin. Well, I use Preve.com, which I believe takes some sort of an average. Let me see if I can find out exactly. Yeah, how I was going to say I use uh, BitcoinAverage.com. That said, whether it's a good one. Yeah, yeah they, they take an average, but for some reason, it's saying that the average right now is six hundred ninety-one dollars. I don't think that's right. Uh, Bitcoin Wisdom right now has Bitstamp 578, Mount Gox 651, BTC-E 574, and BTC China 4686 yuan. I'm surprised at the large variance between the big uh, exchanges. It, it does seem like someone would be able to make a loop with all those variances and make $20 per coin just moving your money around. Yeah. Recognized for whatever. I don't know why someone smarter than me hasn't figured that out yet. But. Well, if someone were to do that and I mean, they were using U.S. Support, bank uh, accounts, then that would easily be watched and they would be uh, targeted. At 530. And what usually happens? Well, I don't think there would be anything criminal about that, would there? All over the country. Uh, and, no, uh, just will, the uh, drift in and out of hearings like this one. People's personal, people private uh, financial information is readily available to law enforcement agencies and all sorts I, uh, of uh, government agencies. If and if a person were uh, to, uh, say, uh, uh, pay the wrong amount of tax on that, even by a penny, of, uh, here comes a lawsuit. Mm. Jennifer Shasky Calvary, director of the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, uh, known as uh, FENSAM, the Bureau of the Okay, Department. so we've got FinCEN the there, of, uh, FBI, Shasky, uh, Calvary. Do you go by both names? Department of Homeland Security. Typically just Shasky. Okay. And the Bitcoin Foundation. All right. Anyone uh, else? As director of FinCEN. There are people from the Bitcoin Foundation there? Yes, there's one yeah. from, from the Bitcoin from Foundation there. And other forms of illicit... That's interesting. Activity. Prior to joining Treasury, Director Shasky. I don't know Calvary, anything about the man. Is director Shasky. To my understanding, there are uh, representatives from all sorts of different uh, large Bitcoin organizations there. Our second witness has a name I've never heard before. And our first name is Mithily, right? Mithily? <laughs> uh, sort of rhymes with mightily, right? <sighs> Off to a right, good right, start. Right. Your name ever We've got before? an uh, update from Twitter. Coding in my sleep rights. Less than five minutes into the Bitcoin Senate hearing, and they're already talking about the Silk Road. Shocker. Also, Michael Krieger at Liberty Blitz writes, Oh, they just connected rice into Bitcoin. They aren't, so di they aren't disappointing so far. Uh, across our country. Yeah, the scare tactics are out in full force, it appears. served for nearly a decade as an assistant U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, our neighbor. I'm just looking forward to all the free advertising this gives Bitcoin. Edward Solari, yeah. in charge of criminal investigation. I don't think the big advertising bucks are on C-SPAN. Well, no, but you're getting uh, you know more mainstream news outlets covering the hearings and uh, going, oh, what is this Bitcoin thing about? Even more so than they've done in the past. Yeah, yeah you can you can bet there's some intern at Fox News and MSNBC who's tasked with watching this and making some sort of a news news article out of it. Do you believe that all publicity is good publicity, guys? Uh, is it possible that they could really make Bitcoin look bad because of this hearing? Investigations branch. I believe that's true, but I also believe that we're in an interesting situation right now where China is controlling the market. So whatever you do in the U.S. doesn't really matter. Chinese savers believe in Bitcoin. They've recently doubled their money. They're telling their friends. I believe there's a viral effect on the ground. This Shasky, Director Shasky, you well, are... Well, best case scenario is Bitcoin goes down temporarily and I buy more. <laughs> it's yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, waiting. I'm ready for that. Speaking of, I think we're all ready to load the boat when uh, the price eventually drops. Is there any point of resistance that you guys are looking for that will signal to you a time to buy? No, I try to just buy uh, Bitcoin at a regular ba on a regular basis. I mean, I'm not uh, kind of a dollar cost averaging sort of thing. And I'm pleased to be here today. 
to I, discuss the important regulatory enforcement. I'm looking for a two two hundred and fifty dollar price, but that's just because that's where the last peak and crash was. It's totally arbitrary, right. but that's sort of what I'm expecting because that number still looms heavy in people's heads. I'm expecting two hundred for that same reason, Davi. There was a lot of resistance around two hundred at the um, through the run up, and I think if there were ever to be a, a drop in the strategic price, that, use of that's our one hundred that I'm looking for. We work to achieve to. the difference is though that a lot of the uh, there's been a lot of new people. I mean, a lot of new people have gone to Bitcoin, the Chinese, and they probably don't. You know, remember that you know that uh, 200 and 250 mark. So I don't think they're they're going to be. Th I think they'll see uh, Bitcoin hit 400 and think, oh, this is the time to buy. So I don't know that it will go down that far. That's a great point. You know, you know. Also, there was a lot of sort of sticking around the $100 value, and I sort of suspect that that's because there was some psychological ease in the math being easy. But a lot of the people who are signing on to Bitcoin now are not looking at a dollar versus Bitcoin exchange rate. They're looking at whatever their indigenous currency is. So that psychological stability is going to have to be based on something else. It's not going to be based on, like, the, the decimal. You know what I mean? But also for some more nefarious You don't think that we'll just see uh, lots of different actor, levels where, you know, when it's 1,000 it yuan or it's 1,000 yen. Anonymous. Uh, well, maybe. I mean, like, so... Right now, it's very easy to imagine Bitcoin at 500. Even if it fluctuates a lot, that makes it easy to do the math in my head, which makes it easy for me to make quick decisions without checking the spot every five minutes, right? And I'm going to have that experience at 500. I'm going to have that experience at 1,000, that there's this nice resting place where it makes my life easy. But the people in China are looking at a completely different set of numbers, and so that doesn't exist for them. And um, so that means that we may that, that may not be a factor anymore. countries around the world. An interesting Indeed, comment. the idea that illicit actors I'd also like to uh, take the time to introduce to a new fellow who's joined theoretical. the discussion, Mr. Liberty Jeffrey Reserve, Tucker of Laissez Faire Book Club, has, uh, has joined in this roundtable discussion on the historic fraud, first ever uh, meeting on Bitcoin fraud, that the government is having. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Tucker. And just recently, the department. That's very nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Road. The largest illegal well, we're happy to have you. So far, on internet, uh, it only took less to than Bitcoins one minute for to both the, the government to reference Ryerson, uh, the Silk the Road, drugs, uh, and associate all that of it with said, Bitcoin. It is Are you surprised? Put virtual currency in perspective. No, I mean, there's just a massive ignorance out there, and governments, you know, this is all they really care about is compliance, right? Whereas the best yeah, estimate it seems the like the scare stories were the first out of the gate. The and right now we're hearing from the Treasury Department was and Financial dollars. Crimes Enforcement By Network, way of FinCEN Director, in 2012, Jennifer Shasky PayPal processed Calvary. $145 billion in online payments. Western Union made remittances totaling $81 billion. This and is all that, that all they really care about is everybody goes along with the plan. You know, and, and Bitcoin was a part of the plan. Yeah. Therefore, it's a very To date. Virtual currencies have yet to overtake. It sounds them. like they're making a list of businesses that will be wiped out by Bitcoin. For criminal purposes. <laughs> it's a it's a little uh, Anne Randy for me. 2011, after a public comment period designed to receive feedback yeah, that's from interesting. industry. Uh, speaking of Ayn Rand, this does uh, bring to memory some scenes from Atlas Shrugged, uh, where different meetings are taking place among bureaucrats space, who are fearful of uh, what, what different uh, economic policies will bring. So framework. this is... Uh, then, this is interesting. This last yeah. March, well, the, the truth is, Derek, how can they compete with Reardon Steel? His steel is better than theirs. Like, it's unfair. It's unfair. It's covered by our regulations. Honestly, I'm excited for what I hope will be a moment when they go, okay, so how do we regulate this? And one of the people they've invited to uh, give testimony goes, you, you can't. <laughs> for them to just kind of sit there in silence going, what, what do you mean we can't? It's in the best be completely confused. With these regulations for a number of I think it's also worth noting First that I've been watching the price here and uh, there's been a decline in the, the price the as this with the aim of um, laundering money hearing has begun in the first 15 minutes. We've seen a, a price decline of about $20 purposes, though, um, what is important looking on is the Bitcoin average site. In place so uh, to deal I with do those money laundering think that it's... And to meet this hearing AML is any way responsible for the price drop? At the same time, or do you think this is just a a too small of a time window to tell? I'm not ready to say that it's causal because we've been seeing a lot of volatility in the last week anyway. About so, 
it's hard to say how much of a drop you could credit with this hearing. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that has this has an administrator or exchanger where they know they're. I wouldn't be surprised if there are some nervous Nellies out there who see a hearing and go, and they don't really, they're not really into Bitcoin, and they're like, oh, I better get out before this whole thing gets shut down. But I don't think they make up enough of the market to drop the uh, price significantly or for long. Positive development. For this I'm looking at uh, BitcoinWisdom.com right now, and it looks like Mt. Gox dipped to about 615, but there's heavy buys buying it back up to about 624. So. Capacity to empower customers and expand access to financial services. Exciting. We want such advances to continue. However, those institutions that choose to act outside of the law will be held accountable. FinCEN will do everything in its regulatory power to stop abuses of the U.S. financial system. We have proven our willingness to do just that by using our targeted financial measures under Section 311 of the Patriot Act to name Liberty Reserve as a primary money laundering concern and entering into rulemaking to terminate its access to the U.S. financial system. We stand ready to take additional regulatory actions as necessary to stop other abuses. As the Financial Intelligence Unit for the United States, FinCEN must stay current on how money is being laundered in the United States so that we can share this expertise with our many law enforcement, regulatory, industry, and foreign partners and effectively serve as the cornerstone of this country's AML CFT regime. We are meeting this obligation in the virtual currency space as we continue to deliver cutting edge analytical products to inform the actions of our many partners. We are committed to remaining at the forefront of developments in the days and years to come. The administration has made appropriate oversight of the virtual currency industry a priority, and FinCEN is very encouraged by the progress we have made thus far. Thank you for inviting me to testify before you today. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for, uh, for being here, uh, for uh, the meeting you had with our staff in the last, uh, last week, and for your testimony. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Rahman, please proceed. Good afternoon, Chairman Carper, and thank you for the opportunity to appear before the committee today to discuss the Department of Justice's work regarding virtual currencies. At the Justice Department, we look at virtual currencies through the lens of criminal law enforcement. We recognize that virtual currency systems can be a legal means of exchange, but we also recognize that criminals will always seek to take advantage of new technologies to commit further or hide their crimes. Our responsibility as prosecutors is to ensure that we continue to enforce the law even in new technological settings and to prevent criminals from using those technologies to create zones of impunity. As I will describe in my testimony today, the Department of Justice has been aware of the threat posed by the criminal use of virtual currencies for several years. We have already brought several important prosecutions involving virtual currencies and we intend to remain vigilant in ensuring that any criminal use of virtual currency systems is aggressively investigated and prosecuted. As an initial matter, I should note that virtual currency systems, so long as they comply with applicable anti-money laundering and money transmission laws and regulations, are not inherently illegal. And they can be Yay. because they can provide cheap, efficient, and convenient means to transfer currency. Many of those same features, however, also make virtual currencies appealing to criminals. We have seen increasing use of such currencies like cash. dealers, traffickers of child pornography, and perpetrators of large-scale fraud schemes. Most significantly, we have seen evidence that criminals are drawn to virtual currencies for two main reasons. First, their perception that virtual currencies offer greater anonymity than traditional financial services, and second, the irreversibility of many virtual currency transactions. These features can significantly complicate our ability to utilize one of the most basic techniques we use in criminal investigations, following the money. The Justice Department just one of the has long recognized to do the potential Bitcoin. for the criminal misuse of virtual currency. And no, but again, this is more creepy Ayn Randism where they're the making our jobs harder. Seven. When yeah. Gold and its three principal owners on charges relating to money laundering and operating an unlicensed money transmitting business. As that indictment alleged, the only information a customer had to provide to set up an eGold account was a working email address. 
as a result. Why are we talking about eGold? They're referencing the Liberty Reserve again, I believe. Is anyone familiar with the Liberty Reserve, the off offshore of banking account, I believe it was? is Costa Rica based. Um, and they had a digital currency. Yeah. Yeah. Liberty yeah. Reserve was actually the second incarceration or inc whatever. E-gold was the first, and they were actually buying gold with the money and holding it for you. Systems. Okay. Yeah. It has nothing to do with and development. or Bitcoin. Yeah, I, think, I think this is more of a general uh, digital currency kind of hearing, and they're trying to reference their previous experiences at FinCEN. And offshore... Yeah. As I understand it, Liberty Reserve operated more like Ripple, where sort of money went into one side of the system and then a different currency kind of popped out the other side of the system and it allowed people to send things internationally. Liberty Reserve became a system of choice for cyber criminals and was used in a wide array of illegal activity, including credit card fraud, identity theft, investment fraud, computer hacking, and the trade of child pornography. As a result of the department's actions and the coordinated actions taken by law enforcement agencies in 17 countries around the world, Liberty Reserve was effectively put out of business, seven defendants were charged, and numerous assets were seized. One of the defendants pleaded guilty just two weeks ago. More recently, the department announced significant steps... Such a proud look on her face when she said she put them out of business. ...online marketplaces for illegal goods and services including large quantities of illicit drugs. Allegedly operated by a U.S. citizen living in California at the time of his arrest, Silk Road accepted bitcoins exclusively as a payment mechanism on its site. Charges against Silk Road and its administrator were unsealed just last month in two different districts. The charges against Silk Road's operator included... Every time they say Silk Road, Mt. Gox goes down. ...an attempted murder for hire. <laughs> As part of that takedown of Silk Road, the department seized over 170,000 Bitcoin. I wonder if they're going to mention that Silk Road 2.0 is already up. I was just about to say that. I think I go, <laughs> and our efforts are meaningless because it's already back. Yes, changing technological environment. We must coordinate our enforcement strategy across the federal government. For that reason, we are working closely with the Virtual Currency Emerging Threats Working Group, a variety of law enforcement agencies, both here and abroad, and of course, FinCEN. From the view of law enforcement, FinCEN's recent guidance applying anti-money laundering and know your customer requirements to virtual currency exchanges was an important step in safeguarding our collective ability both to deter criminal activity and to investigate it successfully when it occurs. While there is much more to do, the department is encouraged by virtual currency services that are attempting to comply with U.S. law. We will continue to reach out to those services and provide them with training and other opportunities As for real As this woman from the Department of Justice goes on to give her presentation to the panel, I'd like to also introduce a new guest who's joining us, Adam Levine of grows, Let's we Talk will continue Bitcoin. To explore how new strategies or Thanks for being with us, Adam. A role in ensuring that virtu virtual currency you may be muted um, by default. I am muted. I'm still figuring it out. Hang on a sec. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Congress to ensure that law enforcement continues to have the tools necessary to enforce the law and protect the public. In the meantime, we will continue to aggressively use our existing authorities to deal with those virtual currency systems that do not comply with the law and to aggressively prosecute criminals who use those systems as part of their criminal schemes. And of course, we will continue to innovate in how we investigate crime to deal with whatever changes may come. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the department's work in this area, and I look forward to answering any questions you might have. Good. Well, we look forward to asking some questions. We very much appreciate your uh, your testimony. And no mention of Silk Road 2.0. Lila, you're right. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chairman Carper. Okay, now Thank this is the... Thank you for the opportunity the... to testify on behalf of the Department of Homeland Security okay. regarding the risks and challenges posed by digital currencies in the role of the United States Secret Service. He's investment. going to say terrorism, material support for terrorism. Digital currencies have developed and grown over the last 17 years as part of the continuing integration of information technology into the financial system. As the original guardians of the nation's financial payment systems, since 1865, the Secret Service has continually adapted its investigative methods to keep pace with the evolving use of information technology within the financial system. So this guy's speaking on behalf of the Since Secret the Service? Since the of Eagle in 1996, both digital currencies... Sounds and like the Secret it. Service is a division of the Treasury and is involved in money laundering type uh, enforcement operations. 
Thank you. Processing tens to hundreds of billions of dollars annually in total transaction volume. Criminals and other illicit organizations use digital currency. These groups seek out those digital currency exchangers and providers that best enable them to conceal their illicit activities. For example, Liberty Reserve is alleged to have laundered more than six billion dollars during <laughs> Liberty Reserve is not Bitcoin. Investigation with ICE and IRS criminal investigations dismantled it. Do you think ICE means immigration and customs enforcement now? I see. Do you think they're using Liberty Reserve as an example along with of the use of digital currencies the because it's not activity. Bitcoin and because it was easier to take down and they don't want to the open the can of worms that Bitcoin will be? Investigate criminal activity. It does seem like Liberty Reserve is an incredibly unusual example of the success that they had taking down digital currency in the past. It doesn't seem likely they'll be able to repeat that in the future, so I would focus on it too. It could also just be ignorance. It's entirely possible they don't understand the distinction between different digital currencies. I've been charged and convicted for money laundering in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1956 and 1957. As FinCEN emphasized in March of this year, Digital currency administrators and exchanges have legal responsibilities under various anti-money laundering laws, Title III of the Patriot Act, the Bank Secrecy Act, and FinCEN regulations. DHS law enforcement works closely with interagency, state, local, and international partners in conducting criminal investigations in their respective jurisdictions that may involve the use of digital That's, of course, the uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct Terrorism Act of 2001. ...with authority to investigate computer intrusions in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1030, one of the Secret Service's strategic priorities is proactively investigating transnational organized cybercrime and defeating these illicit organizations. So does anybody think that anything is actually going to come of this that isn't going to be like you know, a little bit of arm waving or like a report being issued or something? Numerous leaders of major cyber crime uh, I, I think what comes of this example, is people who have never heard about Bitcoin before uh, will, a, a lot of people will be hearing about it from this year, sources that they find reputable, like C-SPAN. Right. Yeah, there's a certain point to that. I mean, it seems like everything Washington uh, does stops something and actually ends up promoting it. You know, yeah. Preventing uh, uh, time and again. So, yeah, probably in a strange way, this is from those criminals. a good thing for her. Any Bitcoin made extensive use of digital currency. Right, I agree with that. As a marketing technique for Bitcoin, it seems like it's a real win. But I mean, like if you're defeat or you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to. Some people are putting so much importance on this. Like I, you know, uh, you know, Thomas, you're watching the the Bitcoin price relative to what's going on with the hearing right now. So I mean, clearly, there's kind of an expectation that something might happen as a result of this. But I mean, you know, I, I watched lots of Senate hearings and. Very little ever comes of them, it seems like. And Liberty Reserve. But there's something historic about them taking Bitcoin seriously. Like, Bitcoin totally used to have that, no yeah. Senate hearings, and now they have one. So right. it's just right. a big change from zero to one. Which was probably... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And like, I, you know, I've, uh, I've been predicting since about January that in November we would have congressional hearings. It just was funny that it was the end of November instead of where I bet, which was the beginning of November. But uh, but it's yeah, I mean this is the natural course of things, right? This is how, how it has to go. Used by a wide variety of criminals. One of the things doesn't mean anything. Thing about this particular meeting, Adam, is that they brought out the guns for this one. It's not that they're meeting with a bunch of um, people making their, their policy recommendations or, or senators or anyone like that. Not even techies. They, they brought in uh, security, uh, like Homeland Security, Secret Service. Uh, these are people who are armed, who, who use weapons to, to track people down and hurt them and put them in cages. Uh, these aren't like the regular money regulatory people. Regulatory. Well, of course, you've got FinCEN, but they, they brought out the guns for this like meeting, which, which says to me that um, they want to show their teeth. They're afraid. Right, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think that this is posturing much more than it is an attempt to actually enact any sort of anything. It feels like this is like, it feels like whether or not Bitcoin is going to be good or bad, the, the perception is they have to get out in front of it. And so that's what this feels like to me, is it feels like whether or not it's establishing that they said, hey, look at this Bitcoin thing, this is a great idea, you know, that if only we can stop it from being used by the terrorists. I mean, it seems like, if you, it seems like win or lose, they're posturing. They're saying this is dangerous, but also it could be the greatest thing since sliced bread. So whether or not they win, they still get to be in the history books as the first congresspeople, you know, who got on board, as opposed to 
you know, you, the comparison in the internet days where the early attempts by mo the federal government were to restrict the internet and restrict aggressively the types of business and commerce that you could conduct on the internet. I think that if you look at those arguments now, it's obvious that those people were idiots and short-sighted and lacked vision and wrong. And there's a there's a desire to not be that guy this time around. Important topic, and I look forward to your question. Sorry, thank you so much, and I got thanks to uh, to each of you. For I would say, Adam, that the earlier sections had a incredible theatricality to it, and a certain and Rand feeling of it's making our job harder. Money laundering is easier. This is not good for us. But they didn't seem to have anything concrete that they were going to do to change things. And there were uh, a number of concerns uh, raised. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to... These that, are going to be going for a couple hours, so I'm going to leave you guys to this, but uh, I will uh, watch the live stream. Okay. You're welcome to join us anytime if you've got more info. Thanks so much, Adam. Okay, great. Take it easy. Cheers. Just walk, walk us back in time, if you will, the early days of the Internet when you guys were in middle school. <laughs> and to talk to us about some of the early concerns that we had uh, with uh, the bad uh, that uh, this uh, made the criminal activity that can flow through uh, to the internet. And at a time when this senator imagine, doesn't seem to be taking a, a very serious tone. He's see almost this, conversational. Uh, coming month, as people uh, celebrate the holiday season. By a lot of uh, lot of uh, lot of commerce that goes. He's through. already admitted he's not a technology expert. Uh, people on Twitter are doubting why he's in charge of this commission. Uh, we uh, never imagined anything like YouTube, Wikipedia, uh, Google searches. Pretty amazing what it's become. The ability to download music video. Uh, although in the early days, I recall hearing a, a number of concerns about the bad that could flow from from the internet. Are there are there is this a good corollary or or, or not? And and if so, how? And if not, why not? And we'll start with you, uh, Ms. Shasky. Senator, I, I believe your analogy is, is an apt one. Um, so often when there's a new type of financial service or a new player in the financial industry, uh, the first reaction uh, by those of us who are, are concerned about money laundering or terrorist finance is to think about the gaps and the vulnerabilities that it creates in the financial system and how illicit actors will take advantage of those, those vulnerabilities or gaps. Um, but it's also important that we step back and recognize that innovation is a very important uh, part of our economy. What a safe very politician important. answer. This country is something that we're known for and proud of and want to continue. It's funny they keep saying take advantage of those vulnerabilities and things like that. So Smart that's kind of a, of a thought experiment. Why don't we imagine every time they say vulnerabilities, replace it with the word freedoms. Minimizing the burden as much as we can. <laughs> Uh, we believe that we've done just that with this rule by uh, ex uh, clarifying that virtual currency exchangers and administrators fit within our pre-existing regulatory regime. Regime. Ms. Okay. Ryan, uh, same question. I think the language of some of these bureaucrats is also pretty revealing. Regulatory regime. Have you noticed how often they've described their own policies as aggressive? Testimony. <laughs> as emerging technologies develop and change, as law enforcement, we remain attuned to the criminal misuse of those technologies. But of course, as you describe it, um, there are many legitimate uses. And as I hope I have always I'll also made clear in my testimony, uh, these virtual currency services are not in and of themselves illegal so long as they comply with our applicable money laundering laws and our money transmission laws and regulations. And so I think it is our duty as law enforcement to stay vigilant about the criminal misuse. While I'm here, the new episode of Mad Bitcoins is live on madbitcoins.com. Hoodie the homeless success. China Bitcoin forever. Bitcoin hearing live on PNN. And there's Madbitcoins.com. Um, Liberty Reserve was the largest money laundering in, uh, case ever brought by the Department of Justice, and that is an important fact. Um, and it reminds us that there is good reason for us to remain watchful, and we intend to do that. Um, but we also intend to balance that against the need for legitimate users to use those virtual currency systems. Another as politician intended. answer. Okay, right, good things, you, bad things. Sure, same question. Does he really expect the, uh, a different answer? Of the Secret Service investigations. Um, you know, the Secret Service was enacted uh, to counter. Uh, 
And why haven't we heard from the Department of Homeland Security and the other? Why why hasn't Bitcoin Foundation had a chance to speak? Uh, adapting to a changing threat. It seems um, like we're only seeing the law enforcement officials here, Attorney General's Office, Secret uh, Service. Nation's financial infrastructure. Um, in the 80s, it was access to... Are we to still in the introduction phase, or is this their testimony now? No, they they've given their testimony. System, now they've gotten a question. And it naturally segued okay. directly into computer crimes. In, in uh, recognition of that fact, uh, as I mentioned in my The question being, the is there some good to Bitcoin? Model, and they're all uh, saying yes. Uh, respected... Uh, Throughout the country, and it is uh, it is the way that the service stays. Bitcoin price is climbing on that sentiment. Threats that can uh, come from the internet. <laughs> All right. A couple of years ago, there's a film uh, called Dillinger, and uh, my wife, who's usually not a, a fan of uh, gangster movies, I haven't seen this movie. Uh, when I went to a I feel uninformed complex theater complex in Delaware, and one of the films showing was Dillinger, she said, "Let's go see that." I said, "Okay." And uh, I'll never forget one of the scenes in, in, in the film, uh, Dillinger and his gang, they, they made their living robbing banks, as you know, shooting a lot of and getting away with it. And uh, near the latter part of the, uh, the film, they were on the, on the, the run, and uh, they, uh, Dillinger looked up one of his uh, old uh, compadres in the bank robbing business to, uh, to see if uh, he couldn't give him a hand. And I remember they met, and it looked like the top of the top. How could this possibly be again. relevant? He's already gone over a minute with this Dillinger story. Guys. I believe this is Dillinger from 1973, directed by John Millis. And the uh, well, I know who John Dillinger was. I mean, there's a lot of sort of mythology around John Dillinger as this sort of very successful criminal. He's running the the operation. But, he doesn't run rob banks anymore. He said, "You're stupid to to do that." He said, "This is the future. Said, this is the future for criminal activity. The way to make uh, the way to make money." And I suspect for some people, they see uh, this is a future for them to make uh, money through criminal activity, whether it's in uh, pornography, child pornography, where it's in money laundering, uh, uh, human trafficking, any number of of activities. But uh, we figured out how to to deal with those guys in that film. Wearing their uh, shirts and ties and doing uh, illegal, illegal activities, not robbing banks anymore, not shooting. Is he people. serious? We figured out how to deal with that. Uh, how confident you are that we're going to be able to deal with the potential criminal uh, behavior? This was all the setup for a question. He doesn't even have a point. Was uh, Mr. Lowry? And, and, this, and the second part, I said, how does the what role does Boy, the that's just embarrassing. Body, These are the people at the uh, helm. You know, three branches of government, but what role does the legislative body? Those of us who are really just in these seats, what role do we have to play? I mean, play this is the sure head politician spearheading this charge. The, uh, the dark side of this, uh, of this uh, technology. He's a I, I agree with Ben's comment. It is more likely that he's referencing the 2009 movie Public Enemies with Johnny Depp. The uh, first of their kind investigations. Um, we specialize in currently in the transnational cyber criminal. The, uh, of course, historically, John Dillinger was gunned down in the back alley of a movie theater in Chicago after his girlfriend ratted him out. It was not the investigation. It was the reward that led to the murder of John Dillinger. It's just a device fraud, um, identity theft, and computer hacking. Um, you spoke earlier about the, the change. In, in There's a famous Internet group that has a, a, a quote going around about John Dillinger died for your sins. The criminal... It used to be that we had to worry about, uh, back in the days of early access device fraud, we had to worry about someone dumpster diving or, or trying to get an actual you know, image of your, your credit card. Dumpster um, diving, that's Hackers, the movie, 1995. These guys have done nothing to stop identity theft. That's entirely credit card companies. Are <laughs> uh, you know, we are consistently, aggressively, and strategically investigating. That's to, a great uh, point. The, um, credit cards do impact. quite a bit to um, stop identity the theft. They have huge data models, centers, I which, think. Uh, um, I there are bigger. Plenty of cyber criminals yeah, in prison right now. Completely dedicated to just making sure that uh, uh, transactions question, are and, uh, legitimate. And, uh, I'd ask you to respond to it. And, 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 and the stopping identity theft. I mean, they would be entirely. It would all be stolen. The role, the role <laughs> well, if you hack me and steal my Bitcoin wallet or or access to it. Congratulations, you've stolen that, but you haven't stolen the rest of my identity, um, all my other information. Whereas if you hack, uh, you know, uh, Visa or Mastercard, they have all of my personal information. My personal information is tied to that account. It's not tied to my Bitcoin address. 
uh, is working. Well, Bitcoin's a little bit different uh, here uh, in uh, that people are personally responsible country, for their money uh, for the first time ever for a lot of people, whereas before the government would guarantee that your money was safe. Um, now people are personally responsible, and it seems like the uh, the government doesn't know how to handle that because them keeping your money safe was really them keeping their hands on your money. Is this new technology appears before us? Well, I believe it goes back to the uh, the most important part of, of being able to do this job is uh, the hiring, developing, and retaining of uh, a highly qualified workforce. Um, obviously, are they recruiting? Gifted investigator. They need more money. They need more money. International criminals down. <laughs> so that is always a challenge, especially given in the uh, current fiscal res uh, environment. You know, an agency designed to prosecute Bitcoin would be a fantastic jobs program because it, you could dump an insurmountable amount of, of, of money and labor into it, and it would never accomplish anything. It has proven itself to be... It occurs to me that you're describing perfect government service there, Don. ...with uh, agencies well, here in the United States, but abroad, in order Wasn't to it earlier this week that the, the um, um, police department in Massachusetts before, paid a ransom in Bitcoin? Uh, it was $750. Dollars and at that time it was about two Bitcoin. Had they operation. simply held on uh, we and not and, um, and, and not cashed um, in those the Bitcoins, time, the uh, they, they might have been doing pretty well. Here and abroad, we had 17 other countries working with us for coordinated arrests and takedowns. We seized assets on the same day that arrests. Well, were for all we know, uh, they bought more than the two Bitcoins needed to pay the ransom, and they're doing just fine. <laughs> Enough, well, that's what I'm saying. Why shouldn't it be, be part of um, government uh, um, agencies' that that mean that we're not unaware of the uh, like challenges financial plans to, to have some assets on the books, including Bitcoin? That Why not? To virtual currencies that we are remaining attuned well, to. Well, how do they determine the value on that ransom when they hold them at trial? Uh, are paying attention to the fact that Unclear. some virtual currency services may be based in countries that have lax or regulatory oversight is of concern to us. Uh oh. Um, they are <laughs> they control they what other people uh, do. Customer record. I like when they make up words laxer. Challenges that go along with. I just heard the word freedom. Organization. Other countries that have more freedom are dangerous. And we're up to the challenge. <laughs> we're continuing to work together to ensure that we're we are innovating as criminals are innovating and that we stay one step ahead of them. Um, as for what the legislative branch can do, I think. As for our criminal statutes, um, we feel confident that the statutes that we have available to us are money laundering statutes, our money transmitter statutes, are broad enough to encompass the activity that we've been talking about this afternoon. And in fact, those statutes are the ones that we used in eGold and Liberty Reserve, for example. And of course, to the extent what, that what motive could are these agencies possibly have for wanting to take on Bitcoin? Wouldn't it be easier for them to sidestep this issue and say it's not under our for purview? Example, if a child exploitation enterprise. They seem to be taking direct responsibility for it, as if this was a kickoff to an enforcement type action. Child exploitation statutes, and so uh, we feel confident that the statutes that we have on the books are. Um, are flexible enough to... Well, their interest is, is that all of them are funded with tax dollars, mm -hmm. and so when they see something come down the pike that makes it difficult Around. for them to collect taxes, all of their jobs are being threatened. Right now, and we'd be happy she to says work, she's um, confident, but the tremor in her voice says different. ...to ensure that um, we let you know whenever we need those legislative tools. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Shaskowski, would you uh, respond to that question as well, please? Sure. Actually, uh, the two questions. Well, I mean, in a way, all these people are on autopilot. They're just saying what they're supposed to say and what they've been trying to say. The Bank Secrecy Act and the U.S. Patriot Act. No one's going to stand up and say, you know, I don't think we're actually going to be effective at all. What the hell can we do? It's the honey badger. First instance, using that platform. So right. In a the way, they sort of have to be course, the um, the biggest and baddest uh, pro wrestlers who, who have come to the show. They have to really show off their their strength uh, here and, and throw words around like um, under regulatory uh, authority. In 2011, when we it's, it's all just it's all just theater. They're mainly interested in their jobs. Uh, uh, yeah, saying the right thing, making the Congress people happy, vice versa. Uh, These regulations. Would Live yeah. with changes in the market. 
uh, what we found is that it's yeah that's a done that's a good that. point these so people are not um, has come more strongly it's, to the it's unlikely the that they are, are taking on a, a great a uh, grandiose that sense that of responsibility to smack down Bitcoin to they're really just probably in the back of their minds just thinking I want to get through this day I've been very nervous I wonder what my boss is going to say I wonder how I'm going to look to my friends this is probably the types of things that they're really thinking about they're thinking about cocktail hour already institution has been his primary money laundering <laughs> incredible volume on Mt. Gox pushes Bitcoin back up through 650 660 Front Liberty Exchange that targeted financial authority I wonder who uh, the first politician will be to go uh, well who's behind Bitcoin how do we stop them and for one of these people to go uh, it's math it's gonna go uh, that's how it works <laughs> And uh, we would. I would like to see to someone who is knowledgeable about Congress, Bitcoin uh, uh, to see if give any one of those sort of verbal better. smackdowns okay, to a you. senator who's asking uh, a question like that. Uh, uh, if we do get that kind of testimony, I hope that there is a camera on their facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> if I could, you said several new payment methods for in the uh, financial sector. Does anyone know the schedule for this hearing? Are these the only speakers we're going to see? No, there's uh, there are seven speakers, um, and it appears to be in two parts. Here, I can read you the list of uh, people who are speaking. Just a moment. you said, however, those institutions that you fingers crossed, Dennis Kucinich. AML I don't think he was on the list. I know he's he's not in Congress anymore, but I like mentioning him. Vincent will do everything in its regulatory power to stop such abuses of the U.S. financial system. Now, when you talked about several new payment methods in the financial uh, sector that have proven their capacity to empower customers uh, and encourage the development of innovative financial products, maybe expand access to financial services, the, the, this is the, uh, the, the bright line. Uh, in, uh, yeah, the, they'll uh, be talking uh, about whether or not they're going to issue bit licenses. That's still <laughs> coming up. They haven't mentioned whether or not they're going to issue bit licenses. Uh, to How businesses those, uh, deemed out, in uh, compliance with sure. a possibly the new set of financial statuses created solely for digital is, uh, currencies like Bitcoin. Cards. Uh, How will they prevent people from selling counterfeit bit uh, licenses uh, on Silk Road? Uh, the risks, uh, <laughs> I don't know if they thought of that. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and what if the country just move company just moves to another country? Yeah. I mean, how are they going to stop that? Prepaid cards uh, to gain an, an, their initial access. To well, the, Dobby, don't you remember they shut down the slope for like a month ago? It's possibly. dead forever. Uh, in my own uh, personal experience, I think of online banking and the changes that's made uh, for me as a consumer, and and the idea of ACH, where I can now take a picture of of a check and deposit it into my. Oh account. wow! How high um, tech! Some of these technological advances make things uh, easier for the consumer, and so those would be uh, examples that come to mind. Uh, but with each of these, we needed to think uh, in the early days as they came to market. Uh, how might criminals uh, use these systems? How might they exploit systems? Because the fact is, any financial service, any type of financial institution can be exploited. Cash is probably well, still we lost the best one Jeffrey one Tucker money. and we gained uh, one Michelle but, uh, Seven of Michelle7.com. Thanks for joining us, Michelle. You're probably that muted that uh, from the get go, right. but if you unmute yourself, you'll be welcome to commentate on the show. I'm going to ask each of you to take a shot at this question. We've already addressed it to some uh, extent, but I want to come back and, and uh, do a little deeper dive if, if we could. The, the, the question I, I, I want to get to and I want to come I back to I wish this is, senator had his questions prepared ahead of time. He is awful. Including, that would include uh, bit, uh, Bitcoin fit into our current legal and regulatory And he framework. stumbled over the word Bitcoin. How prepared was he for this? In the last <laughs> I'll come back to, to me, if you will, with some further thoughts on whether you see... An, any come on, Derek. To be fair, I'm sure a lot of these older politicians are just now getting to being able to log into their own email, so we've got them some slack. Part of the question, the second half of the question, were which agents... And remember, of course, that it's confusing because two bits is a quarter. So Bitcoin, it's a very confusing concept for the older generation. I feel up to taking this one first. That would be fine. Well, his first question, how do we have this fit into uh, anything? Well, you can't. That's the beauty. I can speak. Um, That's right. I know, obviously, you know, Bitcoin was the uh, the currency that is 
part of this discussion today. Um, I can speak within the, the uh, Look framework at his smirk. of the smirk. He is so happy about Bitcoin. What we see out there, and uh, it's I think it's important to recognize that within what we see in our investigations, that the online cyber criminals, the uh, the high level international, he is really cyber happy right we're now. Talking about have not <laughs> in large gravitated towards the. Uh, Maybe period. he's got an ace up his sleeve. Bitcoin. Um, again, this is within the confines of what Did we, you hear we what he with. said? Why? Um, He's happy that the criminals have not European drifted to the peer-to-peer -peer currency. Have, uh, developed a specialty and have... A lot of their lines seem to be quoting the movie Hackers, where they just um, digital blandly attack the criminals as if they're advertising methods for the criminals to use. Locale that may have less regulatory uh, guidelines, may have less aggressive, aggressive law enforcement. Um, so that is aggressive. a decision I, I think needs made. The, um, is the virtual currency within the existing laws? I believe there are there are plenty of opportunities for uh, digital currencies to operate within the existing laws and regulations. And as far as uh, the Secret Service investigations are concerned, as long as they fit within the laws and they uh, they um, comply with existing FinCEN guidance, um, then there would be no no uh, violation, no reason for the uh, Secret Service to look for look in. <laughs> The second half of the question, which agencies do you believe need to be at the government's <laughs> work on? It's all going down! Yes! <laughs> a few years ago that uh, a joint effort was needed, and the FBI set up and led the Virtual Currency Emerging Threats Working Group, which is now the working group that my colleagues here and many other agencies participate in. It's born out to be very fruitful. It's a forum that allows all of the agencies that you'd want to be at the table, the Treasury Department, um, our law enforcement agencies, even within the Department of Justice, the FBI, DEA, and other agencies within the Department of Justice's prosecutors. Um, we have U.S. And what is that costing the taxpayer? The criminal division, the asset forfeiture and money laundering section. That's all billable <laughs> hours. Billable hours. Participating. Um, OFAC, IRS, and a number of other... It doesn't cost me anything, huh? Um, we think our necessary participants are, in fact, participants. We also have foreign law enforcement that participates in that group, including the National Crime Agency in the UK. And these are, I think, the most important agencies... How about this? Instead of investigating it... So. They could just invest in Bitcoin, and when Bitcoin goes up in value, they could build all the roads and the bridges that we need, right? Imagine that. We're additional participants, and even, in fact, last week... <laughs> I think the moment the United States uh, government decides to start buying Bitcoin, I think they'll go ahead and dump mine. <laughs> like, I won't trust it at that point. Last week, we... Uh, I wish I was there so I could ask them domestic uh, agency that should be at the table and we've invited... Like should you buy there Bitcoin? That's the beauty of it. It's going to be an evolving process. It's proven so helpful thus far and I think we are um, intending for that to continue to be an important forum in which we can um, talk jointly about what the emerging threats are, um, what agencies can do to coordinate across the government both here and abroad. Um, as for the regulations and the laws that cover um, virtual currency, um, I feel confident that currently our criminal statutes that um, we have used in our prosecutions thus far have been effective tools. Our money laundering statutes have been very effective in our ability to prosecute Eagle to Liberty Reserve, for example, <laughs> our substantive criminal statutes. That one example that we can come up with. And murder statutes. That one time it worked in the past. To um, charge the administrator of Silk Road. And our um, money transmitter statutes, which is 18 U.S.C. 1960, have also been, has also been used uh, to prosecute Liberty Reserve and some of its principles, for example. And so I do think that we have the statutory tools for the most part that we as prosecutors need. No, to you're get completely overlooking. I would, like to know, I would like to know how much it cost versus okay, the, the taxpayer tax versus year how much has was collected in remedy. Like, uh, where is the our money laundering statutes uh, through the Oh, it must have cost millions of dollars to track down the um, and, um, Liberty Reserve, um, Silk Road, all of those. I doubt they get their support. money back. I guess, actually, though, if you think about it, the government's creating jobs for all of those 
prosecutors and police we've and over the years several updates that we remember the government has significant Bitcoin holdings thanks to busting the dread pirate Roberts you know, the questions in turn this is actually good for them they're promoting their own product today Vincent has never opined and and still is not opining on whether virtual currency is a real currency or a commodity <laughs> Uh, as those questions are outside of our purview. Are they? We are the... Outside of your purview? Can't you think? <laughs> How can they investigate and hold people accountable for something that's not real? And only that. Uh, and we tried to make that clear uh, in our guidance this last March. Uh, but this country, like all countries... Has anyone representing Bitcoin mm -hmm. spoken? The financial system from... No, money not yet. Uh, but also protecting consumers from fraud, protect, uh, collecting taxes, uh, protecting investors, uh, ensuring economic stability, all things that are a part of our regulatory system but outside of the purview of FinCEN. Uh, and so to the extent um, that, that this body or others uh, feel that it's appropriate to take those considerations uh, into account with regard to virtual currency, uh, we would look forward to working with them to make sure we're... You just talked for five minutes and said nothing. All right, thank you. That's what they've all been doing. They're, they're politician types. You all know uh, about uh, the... Uh, oh, give us a good question. GIO. And uh, one of the most people, I guess a lot of people in this country, heard them, my, most people probably have no idea what GIO is or what they do, but they're we know a watchdog and sort of the congressional watchdog to make sure that we're uh, minding our P's and Q's. In if you want people to know what it is, define it. It's the Government Accountability Office, right? Try yeah. to do it in a cost-effective way. Thank broad, you. Uh, broad uh, <laughs> operations, widely diverse operations. Every, um, every other year, the GAO comes up with something they call their high-risk list. And when I first heard about the high-risk list, I said, what is that? Oh, and the HRL. This is a, uh, uh, a whole list of uh, activities uh, designated by or identified by the uh, General Accountability Office to waste money. Every now and then I, I, I talk. All right, I got to go. I'll about, probably be back later. Try to reduce the budget. Thank you. I want to hear this. I have people say, um, I don't want to pay any more taxes, but if I'm going to, uh, I just don't want you to waste my money. And uh, one of the things that JO does, working with the Congress, is to identify ways to to uh, f spend money more uh, effectively, and uh, also to collect monies that are owed to the Treasury um, more uh, more effectively. And it's led that second half of that uh, function I want to talk about. The uh, JO every other year uh, reports to us, uh, along with the help of the IRS, on something called tax gap, uh, monies that are owed. Uh, hundreds of billions of dollars that are owed to the Treasury, but they're not being... Are they talking about individual I taxes, not corporate taxes? The money. But it's a lot of money that goes uncollected. And I'd like to say that number is going down, but uh, but uh, unfortunately, to my knowledge, it, it isn't, at least not uh, not just. But what I what I want to do is, with that as, uh, as background, um, uh, just ask you... Uh, this, uh, this... this when, when, I, when I think about the... Uh, uh, new types of currencies. I wonder how they fit in to the tax system here in in, in our country. And as you know, uh -oh. we just talked about it, GAO. But they uh, they issued a report. I think it was early this year, maybe it was May of this year, in which uh, follows uh, uh, my line of thinking and assesses that uh, virtual currencies could present a real real vulnerability and, and actually make worse what is our freedom diff difficult could present freedom. They, uh, they recommend Big red candle dipping a below 650. to your paradigm. Yes. To taxpayers on the uh, basic tax reporting requirements for virtual currencies. And let me just ask, do you know the current status of that, uh, that guidance? And uh, what uh, could we expect uh, it to include and when can we expect it? How much money is it going to cost us to collect the money that we're never going to get because it's not owed to us and it doesn't belong to us? And uh, I'd be happy to begin with that one. So, um, first of all, as the Financial Intelligence Unit for the United States, uh, one thing FinCEN does uh, after it collects all of the information that our financial institutions provide to us is we make that available to our partners in law enforcement, not only for the purpose of enforcing our criminal laws, but also for the collection of taxes. And so we have a very close Ooh. and long-standing relationship with the IRS. That's just about. 
and the civil side to help them do just that. The truth fact, comes out. In very last week, uh, we were meeting with them on this very topic, virtual currencies, and, and how to think of that in our joint work. Uh, so uh, something that I know they're taking very seriously. When it comes to, to guidance on virtual currency for taxpayers, uh, I know there was the GAO report um, uh, that uh, suggested that IRS come out with some guidance because there is, uh, there may perhaps be some uh, question as to, to how to treat uh, different uh, uses of virtual currency for purposes of our taxing regime. And uh, well, that's I right. It's, it's a regime. Refer you to IRS to get into great detail. What I can tell you, and I do know, is that they are working diligently on such guidance, uh, and that. Uh, is, Any idea when we might expect to see it? My understanding is that the GAO report may have set forth some deadlines. I think it's usually 60 to 90 days. Uh, I can tell you they're actively working on it, and it's at the right. forefront of their minds. Uh, and uh, I think it'll be very useful guidance for the taxpayers Thank when you. it comes out. Ms. Ms. Rahman, do you want to add or take away anything from what Ms. Shasky said? Certainly not take away anything. Um, I, I defer to the IRS on the status of the guidance, and I... Um, I'm not personally aware of the status of the guidance. Um, I will say that the Department of Justice was very aware of the GAO report. We took an interest in its findings, and we've been in discussions with the IRS about some of the findings in the GAO report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Shasky, I think you, you said earlier, you might say earlier, that uh, FinCEN did not opine on whether or not uh, virtual currencies are currencies or commodities. And uh, I would just ask uh, of you, who, who do you think should be making that uh, that decision? <laughs> um, who uh, who, should, be, uh, beyond who, who should be making that decision? Do we need that decision? Obviously, the Department of Homeland Security should make decisions <laughs> like that. I'm not sure I know who should ultimately make that decision. I do know it's outside of the... It's not a decision if it's clearly working, and it's clearly working. Uh, in terms Bobby, of the, is that a goatee or is that a beard? Because beard. I have the Congress beard. Okay. Uh, How do we know? Commodities, the CFTC. How do you know? How do we know? Securities, the SEC. There's got to be. There's got to be an agency there that can like tell me making those what you've told me already, and I can see for myself just we know to make that sure. currency currently exists. We know that it is. Being well, it's uh, it's um. It's a little sticker that they put on my driver's license that specifies whether it's a goatee or a beard so that officers who pull me over financial system have no use for that information at all. <laughs> From laundering money for, for the purposes of terrorism through our U.S. financial system. Terrorism. Our entire focus terrorism. Mark your bingo cards. Terrorism. America. Regulatory scheme, uh, and uh, the the nice thing is that the regulatory scheme that we have in place has it's a scheme in it to change uh, as the landscape changes. It's the scheme so, regime. Uh, if some part of the industry were to ultimately define be defined to come under the SEC or the CFTC. Um, our AML, our anti-money laundering regulations, also uh, apply to those areas of the industry. And so regardless, we're going to make sure that we're taking every mitigating step we can to prevent illicit actors from operating through the U.S. financial system. Okay. Guess what? No, we're not operating within the U.S. financial system. Yay! You got that part right. <laughs> As I, I think you're both probably aware. A few weeks after the Silk Road website was taken down by federal law enforcement, a new Silk Road website uh, popped up in its, uh, its place. And it's oh, that's embarrassing. Other similar marketplaces exist. Oh, they the mentioned Silk Road 2.0 is back. Selling weapons, selling child pornography, and in some cases, uh, market. Weapons selling child pornography and drugs. Well, not these are uh, real markets. And who do they think they are? The government? Scam artists' uh, idea. Of is he going to try to get our money back from these investigators? You know, just to be perfectly clear, Silk Road 2.0 has a policy of no longer selling weapons or child pornography. They now have full-time moderators who are screening that. So they're perfectly fine selling drugs, but they are Wait. they are setting a policy against aggressive listings. So the free market regulated itself. The Secret Service. Bingo. Also, they mentioned Silk Road, so the price is going down. We're at 658 and falling. 
that facilitate the online crimes. The uh, Silk Road type uh, criminal forums. 665. Civil Service or on the criminal oh. forums. Eastern Bitcoin based predominantly. Used on the Silk Road, sell, the sell, large sell. trafficking, <laughs> stolen financial data, and what have you. So there are other. Uh, other of these websites that specialize in specific crimes. Um, the uh, the other part of the infrastructure is the digital currencies. The use of digital currencies, predominantly the uh, digital currencies that fall outside of the guidance of FinCEN or outside of U.S. law or in countries that uh, obviously, as I said earlier, have less like all uh, of regulatory them? controls. And the third is uh, what we call the uh, we refer to as bulletproof hosters. Um, refer to as what? Bulletproof hosting. It is. Uh, it's a criminal. Is this a plug? Individual who specifically sets up business in a in a country with very little regulatory or aggressive law enforcement, and provides uh, a platform for attacks to be launched against the U.S. criminal infrastructure. Freedom. Read as a country with more freedom. <laughs> Did he just say attacks launched against the U.S. criminal infrastructure? The individual behind a specific crime, uh, the intruder, the large scale event. That's vendor. funny. And personal data, the uh, well, what have you, um, or, and at times it may be that if we can identify a forum or a digital currency that is within legal reach, within reach of, of U.S. law enforcement, case in point, Liberty Reserve or uh, eGold, then it makes strategic sense to take that out of the equation. Ooh, um, take it out if we can. The Can't do it with Bitcoin, though. No, won't bring that up. Um, for strategic reasons, quite honestly. Usually to... Uh, facilitate the arrest of other individuals we're looking at. Why haven't they made a right. distinction between uh, centralized and decentralized <laughs> currencies? Um, I think the challenge that you're pointing to sometimes... Um, Maybe they don't know the difference. ...results from anonymity, and it results from... It's too many technical. ...migrating to hidden services Seems on the Internet. Seems pretty important if they keep bringing up Liberty Reserve. ...to services on the Internet. And that has been a challenge for law enforcement, but as you've seen from the results that have um, been... Uh, that we've been able to achieve in the last several years, I think we've been able to keep pace with that and we've been able to develop tools and strategies to address it. Although it is, um, I think, as you mentioned, it can be frustrating to the public to see another uh, website pop up after one that's Oh, the public is so frustrated. Yeah, the millions down. of customers are so um, upset. I do think, as Mr. Lowry said, that it's incredibly important for us to be taking those steps, not just to disrupt uh, that particular organization, but to send a message to charting. those websites that um, that they can. Uh, that's BitcoinWisdom.com. Is watching. Thank you. Uh, and it is not, in fact, anonymous, um, and it is not, in fact, immune from um, investigation. And that is an important message to send. Um, we are uh, threatening you to the results of these takedowns know that the community is aware, um, the criminal community is aware when we take these actions. It's important that we do so. It's important that we put the wrongdoers um, in prison when they de uh, deserve it, and it's important for us to put these um, uh, organizations out of business, and I think we've been able to do that. All right, well, that was a very encouraging addition. To, uh, Wait, the whole point of that commentary was because they were not able to do that. Job creation. Uh, I'm, I'm going to direct to uh, to Mishaski. Well, they were but, not uh, able to do what, Doug? The, uh, uh, they last... were not able to, to, to throw the criminals in jail when they deserved it. They were not able to shut down those organizations when it was called for. And she ended that list of aggressive things that they think that they need to do with, I think we've been able to accomplish that. But the whole point was that Silk Road 2.0 is already up. That was what she was commenting on. The things I'll do, you always yeah, it's like right she totally missed the question. An opening statement, and, and I appreciate it very much. Um, okay. Okay, so I see in the settings all the different charting styles, but I don't see an option for anything longer than one week on a time period. Is there, am I missing something here? What you said, what others have said, some of the questions that we've asked, and some of what you've It's got a day and three days. So just be thinking Yeah, about nothing longer than a week. While they're thinking about that, Ms. Mm -hmm. Chasky, I'm going to ask you uh, this, this question. I, don't, I think, I don't know what D means in their, in their thing. That's day, no. one week, three day, one day, 12 hours, six. That, oh, uh, no, but it wasn't like 150 in a day. This looks really big. To move overseas to. No, no, but I mentioned longer yeah, time, time, like a month and year chart. Uh, what if, uh, if anything, can they. It doesn't look like it. 
try to keep businesses in this country? What are we doing that seems to make sense? What maybe more should we I, do? I think this one is like the beginning of time. It's Vincent engaging with international partners on regulation of uh, of virtual. No, because it only goes back to November 18th, right there, November 14th. So those two questions, please. Sure. So yeah. Oh, that's um, first. Oh, I see. It. Keeping business in the it United says one W, but I think that means something yeah. different than whatever we think it is. The United States, yeah. based on perceived or actual regulatory burden. So the question uh, to this FinCEN woman is: What should we do? Uh, every country, as I mentioned earlier, has an interest in protecting uh, its financial system from illicit actors who would launder money or, or move money on behalf. But we want to protect ourselves from you. Tax, <laughs> protecting investors and protecting consumers from fraud and ensuring a, a stable economy. And so we protect them by pointing guns at them. System, this virtual pay, currency payment system, system about which we're talking today is, is short Bitcoin right now. Player, a significant player in the financial system. Regulation. It's climbing 670. Catch up because it has to. Uh, and we so love to like here is to have smart regulation. That both mitigates it's climbing the, 674, while at the same time minimizing the burdens. Uh, I feel confident that at least in the AML CFT. Uh, what does that stand for? 680. Laundering counter terrorist financing. Thank you. Realm, we have uh, uh, managed to do that. Go, go, uh, go. And met that challenge. Um, and uh, where did we start at the beginning of the hearing? That's going to be born out. In terms of price, time. it was so, 580. Uh, so we've gone from 580 to 680. Well, we uh, might be using US, different uh, measurements. Actually, US. no, we, we uh, started on the Mount Gox price, and I believe that's what um, to ensure Thomas that we is have referencing. Kind of I had around 650 at the start. So we've okay. gone up and down. There was a drop to 600. There was obviously a buying opportunity, but it was very brief. It got r bought right back up. You can see here at the bottom. Yeah, it seems like you were right, Dobby, the, that this, the um, and Adam also, that this My hearing has very little bearing on the price. Uh, the price is going to be volatile known, uh, no matter uh, if there's sure a meeting or not. Is that my counterparts abroad have well, there's some, definitely about. some panic. Find out what we're doing. We're talking time. about, Derek, um, before uh, about the difference between able to act uh, technical analysis and fundamental analysis. The technical analysis doesn't really consider news and um, events and controls, but rather Same thing. Just, uh, count waves or like using candlesticks. Are trying to chain. All right, thank you. Now, you wow, the global the average is question, over seven hundred dollars. We're at six ninety on Mount Gox. The global peak at bitcoinaverage.com has the price at seven hundred and one dollars and fifty seven cents um, it's US dollar. It's encouraging from an, uh, from the law enforcement standpoint to have interest. Cheers, bravo, Bitcoin. They aren't bravo, easy. Bitcoin. Um, as although we've had many and successes, we've uh, clearly had challenges too, and um, it is helpful when we have interest from people like yourself, and it's helpful when we have questions asked of us like, what can we do to help? Um, there's always something that we can do um, better. Yeah, we're from the it's, government. Um, helpful to have these dialogues. We're here to help. I also think it's encouraging that we have, I have colleagues like the ones that are sitting next to me who are, have been willing to work together on these. Um, okay, so of press. these three individuals, um, who really has any way, role with Bitcoin? It's mostly FinCEN, right? There's illegal. this uh, Senate um, Homeland Security woman and the Secret Service guy, they've got no, like, it makes no um, sense for them to be a part of this, right? Uh, have done for ages. Um, this will be another vehicle through They're just here because they were called to be there? Try to launder proceeds or commit additional well, the uh, Secret Service has to do with uh, money laundering. Of the tools that we need um, to address those threats. Um, and I feel confident that we have the will to address That's not Secret Service, that's FBI. There's money laundering, not Secret Service. Um, and we will remain vigilant. Um, Secret Service is the part of the FBI that's for the presidential detail. And we have in the last several years. Virtual currencies didn't just sneak up on us, as I um, oh, said in my opening statement. We brought our first indictment in 2007. And um, so we, in, we assume that these kinds of threats will continue to emerge and change and evolve, and um, we intend to keep pace. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> keep pace, you haven't caught up. 
It just so happens the that Secret Service, as a part of the Department of Treasury, is involved in financial crimes such as counterfeiting of U.S. currency. Thank you, Tom. But um, in closing, as a DHS law enforcement agency um, and a longstanding uh, regional defender of the U.S. critical infrastructure, um, and the Secret Service working with our partners, um, in law enforcement as well as in the prosecution and, and FinCEN and our international partners will um, continue to work strategically to remove the, the gravest threats to our infrastructure. Um, it's going to take consistent uh, awareness of the, uh, of the growing threat. And we know we're going to have to adapt as we always have and we're going to have to um, hurdle the uh, international issues and what have you working together overseas. Um, and, and I do know U.S. law enforcement is very aggressive and, and also um, very um, collaborative with our foreign partners um, because we realize that th this issue can't be taken care of uh, just by ourselves. Um, we will continue to work uh, as we respond to these threats. We, uh, as a part of DHS, will continue to work um, to disseminate the threats through uh, DHS and through our electronic crimes task forces, through our, our various partners to ensure that the uh, remaining 16 uh, CIKRs throughout uh, for the country's infrastructure are provided the greatest level of protection. And uh, we believe firmly that aggressive law enforcement is a strong part of, of uh, cybersecurity, um, which will benefit the nation as a whole. Thank you. We should ask you the last word. Thank you, Senator Garber. Uh, I'd like to thank you, as my colleagues did, for convening this very important hearing. Um, you know, I, I heard a banker, a CEO of a fairly large bank, say recently that uh, uh, having the privilege uh, to be a financial institution and be a part of the global financial system is just that, it's a privilege. Uh, and there's a reason why uh, countries and jurisdictions ask you to be licensed to Doug be... It, and who financial. grants privileges? You, lady? Great responsibility. Uh, you it, should have seen the drop when she said the word license financial system and particularly in this country 700 financial system we have in the United States on Gox and so on Mount Gox innovation is a wonderful thing and innovation is 4800 you want we're closing on 5000 you want with obligations uh, to have that entree and be able to be a part of the US financial system and one of those obligations is helping to protect that system wow. from illicit actors um, I don't know uh, if this is new or not, but it appears that, that the, the volume the today in place uh, is larger on BTCE than any other exchange. While minimizing the burden. In essence, we're asking virtual currency exchangers and administrators to do three things. Register with FinCEN. It's an online form and it's free. BTC China is over $800 a coin. $48.80. Wait, 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 wait. I got to hear what she's demanding that uh, bad actors will take advantage of your system and maintain records and provide certain reports to FinCEN, uh, including suspicious activity reports. It's something that many other players in the finance system already yeah. do. From the smallest mom and pop check casher that's on the corner here, to the biggest of the global financial institutions, they've all found a way to offer their services while maintaining those same protections. And so that's what we're asking of virtual currency providers. We believe it's reasonable given that we've seen that virtual currency has in fact been exploited by some pretty serious actors. Uh, that being said, FinCEN is constantly... If that were the criterion, then the Federal Reserve note would be, uh, you know, industry. We try to money. parts of the industry together so that they can learn from oh, each other the practices, but it is. practices uh, for, for hardening themselves to illicit finance and to share the information we collect so from them. So she wants with them people so to do three things, register with FinCEN on an online system. form that's free, so at the end of the day, uh, keep we records we of what right. they're doing with Bitcoin, which right, could be nearly impossible for some businesses. Both with industry to see if that's right, as well as our colleagues. And I forget what the third thing is, but she's not Thank painting you. the this whole picture been, uh, here, because if they um, register with FinCEN, then they're also going to have to register with their local and state uh, regulatory agencies about like financial regulations. Uh, as, and that can uh, be a million well. dollars, for example, in New York. I, uh, 
I use I'm gonna, this is probably a stretch of an analogy, but I'm going to try it. I was just looking at the website for the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. Russell yeah. all the time. Um, it's part of the U.S. Department of Treasury. Uh, the list of agencies that kind of overlap and do the same job regarding money laundering is like, unbelievable. And so many more were created through the USA Patriot Act and, uh, because they were able to do um, international ones and ones. False, false choice. And uh, one of the questions has been rattling on in, in my mind of, uh, and as we drill down. Okay, so how is it possible is it that... The Bitcoin thing, I bet you, is going to become a part of a terrorist Currency. accusation Currency. under Section 5318A of the Bank Secrecy Act, yes. uh, under the USA Patriot Act. Yes. Authorizes the Secretary yes. of the Treasury to designate a foreign jurisdiction, yes. institution, yes. class of transaction, or type of account as being of yes. primary money laundering concern and to impose one or more of the five Special measures, see a list of current or proposed designations. So they're going to find a way to call this internet currency, I bet you, a foreign jurisdiction because they're not complying with U.S. regulatory banking laws. And I bet you that they're going to try to say that anyone that participates in the use of Bitcoin is a terrorist. My hope is that you'll feel free to... to the they couldn't say that because they've already said it's got legitimate uses. And what do you guys make of the Bitcoin price being higher in U.S. dollars? Um, it's in the 700s when we talk about that, but then the last price on BTCE is something like in the 600s. Well, what's the... What's, what's the uh, Wild so variance in price here. Uh, just call a, just a very short recess. Recently, BTC-E has always lagged behind. I'm not sure why. Maybe the troll box uh, drives the price down. Doing it about uh, two minutes. But thank you all very, very much for joining us. I don't use the exchanges, but I imagine that however they're instituted differently, the friction within the system would have an effect on the price on that exchange, given how quickly people want to get in or out of the currency. Well, it appears they're taking a quick break, so I'll um, I'll just pause or mute the video and, and come back to, to join you guys. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's whoa I, I see that um, <laughs> funny with the camera there. Okay, well um <laughs> the uh, hi handsome hi <laughs> so hopefully that uh, fixed the issue. But yeah, what why is it that the global average of the Bitcoin price. At this moment, I'm looking at BitcoinAverage.com and I'm seeing a price of $743.22. Uh, and it's been climbing since the beginning of this uh, hearing. Now, why would that be the global average? Um, is that just the global average in US dollars, even though the price in US dollars is lower? Well, remember that BTC China is at eight hundred and twenty dollars a coin right now. So if Gox is at seven forty, it's going to average up from there. China is driving Bitcoin. I see. So uh, the next people who are supposed to uh, speak it looks like they're getting ready. There's going to be um, not for yeah. allowing anyone else to ban people. Good work, Google. This is a terrific interface. Just unfortunately, so we've had three visitors to this video um, within the last couple of minutes. I don't know how it got somehow posted publicly. This is a, a private video chat, so I don't know if in, if anyone's going to be able to join it in the future. I don't know how to keep that from happening. Can you just edit the spots out? I wish. No, this this video is going to go live uh, as soon as it ends. I mean, what are oh. you, you going to do? Human body. Someone wanted to share that with us. Yeah. Uh. It wasn't very attractive. I wasn't turned on or aroused at all, and that's really strange because I'm a horned dog, and it did, it did nothing for me. Nothing. Yeah, it did nothing for me, too. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> So I'm curious about something. It's probably there's probably a very obvious answer, but I don't know it. So I'm going to pose the question. Okay. Um, okay. Regarding the price fluctuations, is there any chance that that could be as a result of fees through the different exchange 
interfaces that actually uh, that person from from joining. I'm really sorry. I there's no, I have no control over this. People can just pop into the discussion. <laughs> you know, I don't like your dick at all. And please, neither do Derek. So so you know, hide it. I've never had anything like that happen during any of these uh, discussions, but I, I think we could at least um, take it as a compliment that enough people are watching. Some uh, a, a exhibitionist thought it was worth um, his, his time to, to join in. I don't know. I think it's the same guy. Can anyone tell? <laughs> the, the name was the same. The name was the same on the... Uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, so they're getting started. They've, they've just gotten seated. They've changed. Uh... To answer the question, though, Derek, do you think that is there any chance that that could be what is affecting the price fluctuate or price differences? Do I think that what is uh, affecting the fees? I think I think it's a possibility because it's it, that's what kind of what I mean by friction in the system. Each exchange's operating system is set up differently. So yeah. based on whatever, because you think of it like a river, you know, whatever, wherever those exchanges put the rocks in the river is going to affect the way that it flows through that system. And so if there are hurdles, it's going to affect how quickly people operate in that exchange. Previously, Mr. Mark worked in a business and, um, and legal affairs at the tech company Big Door as an attorney at a D.C.-based law firm and also as an international investigative journalist. Third witness is Jer Jeremy Allaire. Is it Allaire? Allaire. Mr. Allaire is the founder and CEO of Circle Internet Financial, a startup company focused on promoting mainstream adoption of virtual currencies. A company that could be put out of business by Bitcoin. Mr. Allaire, also <laughs> serves as founder and CEO of Brightco, one of the largest online video platforms in the United States. Our final uh, witness is... Oh, get him off! It asks program. me if I want to block, and I say yes also every serves time. as an adjunct professor of law at George Mason University. His uh, research, research focuses on technology, and internet policy, uh, copyright, and on the regulatory process. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, are welcome to, uh, to each of you. Your entire testimonies will be made to part of the record, and as I said uh, to the first group, you're welcome to, to summarize uh, if you'd like, and uh, try to keep your comments about seven minutes. If you go way beyond that, I'll have to rein you, and otherwise we'll be just fine. Mr. Allen, why don't you lead us off? Thank you. That didn't sound like anybody with any expertise in Bitcoin. That sounded like a bunch of sort of generic tech companies. A digital economy task force with... And the guy from the Bitcoin Foundation. Media and information oh, I missed that. company. Patrick yeah. Merck, attorney. The conference we brought together in June with private sector leaders and government officials to, to look at this larger problem. Uh, the task force that is oh, working like with collusion? includes nice. the Foundation, the Tor Project. Uh, this is game. Ernie Allen from the Center for Missing and Exploited Vital Children. Vital voices, law enforcement leaders from around the world and, and many others. Our goal is to bring people together and work toward reasonable, balanced, effective solutions that protect the promise of the development of and our task force issue. It's final report in uh, February. I'm just going to have to stop this uh, and let me start a new one. I, I, I really can't continue with this about keeping the potential happening. Potential of virtual All program. right, go ahead, re-add us or whatever. Social good. So, particularly in helping to bring about financial inclusion for the um, two and a half billion adults on the planet Tom, today. Tom, how do you feel about hosting the next one? You have a little more experience with uh, hosting these However, and making sure that they stay private. Today, there are risks. Um, you know, All right, right, Michelle, send me an email. Or Derek, send me an email with Michelle. I will, I will send you everyone's Child email address. All right, we'll be right back, I guess, in a minute. We'll, we'll be right back. Thanks, everyone. And we believe it's happening for three.